Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about resveratrol. Let's get right into what it does, how much you should take, and what kind of food sources you can eat in order to get resveratrol. So resveratrol is a natural polyphenol. It's found in red grapes, blueberries, cranberries, and dark chocolate. So it's a bonus for some people. Plants that produce resveratrol, basically what it's trying to do is fight off fungal overgrowth, uh, combat stress, and injury. So the plants actually naturally produce resveratrol in order to do that. But the good thing about it is resveratrol in humans can activate the CERT1 gene, which is the longevity gene. What that means is if I had to take one supplement to increase the anti-aging properties in my body, I would take resveratrol. It's also an antioxidant, anti-cancer, and the reason it's anti-cancer, it, it affects aromatase. So it affects estrogen-based cancers. So it inhibits it <clears throat> and can be anti-cancer because it affects that enzyme. It's also anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective. Neuroprotective in the sense that it decreases inflammation. It's also an antioxidant. So people who have some cognitive difficulty, short-term memory loss, and so forth, uh, resveratrol can be one of the nutrients that you can use in your regimen. It's also cardioprotective because it's an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, but it also helps to decrease blood pressure. Another thing it will do is it will induce glutathione synthesis. What that means is that one, it would stimulate the production of glutathione, which is a very important um, antioxidant that our body produces. So it has a double effect. It increases another antioxidant in our body. It also protects epithelial cells of the lungs. That's very important for people who have lung issues, people who, have, uh, who are smokers and, and take damage to their lungs. So let's go right into this a little bit more, right? So resveratrol modulates inflammation. It affects NF-kappa B and some of the cytokines um, that are associated with inflammation. It also prevents or reduces lung fibrosis, protects lung epithelial cells, especially for smokers. It upregulates CERT1 genes. Now I said CERT1 is a anti-aging type of gene, right? But it also does other things. It protects against oxidative stress, it upregulates glucose and lipid metabolism, as well as promotes stability of the DNA. So it prevents DNA damage when you take resveratrol. That's why it's such an important anti-aging type of supplement. Maintains glutathione levels, like I said, and it inhibits apoptosis. Apoptosis is cellular death. Now, at some point or another, we do want to clean out debris from cell death. However, we don't want to promote cell death. So it inhibits the death of cells or the a rapid um, uh, death of cells. It also preserves the mitochondria. What that does is it helps energy production. So if you can preserve your mitochondria, which is the energy powerhouse of our cell, then you're going to have more energy in general. Here's one. It significantly inhibits MERS uh, cove, right? MER, this one is not the one that's currently going on. So MERS is Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, right? It inhibits or significantly inhibits this virus. It's not the one that is currently occurring now, but it was uh, in the Middle East, right? So the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Now, dosages. 250 milligrams to 2,500 milligrams mixed with high quality fats. So it needs fats in order to be absorbed. So it's important to do that. The other thing is it can create some nausea and, and some symptoms for some people, especially at higher doses, dosages. So you have to be careful with that. But in general, it's pretty safe. It's found in natural substances. So it's hard to get the high amounts that you want in like red wine. Uh, you're not going to get 250 milligrams of resveratrol in, in red wine. So sometimes you need to supplement in order to get the levels that you want. Okay. So like I said, uh, resveratrol is a very good anti-aging supplement because it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and it prevents DNA damage. 
and improves mitochondrial function overall. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.